Right, we're going to look at integrating trig. So, the first three things you need to understand are that in your formula sheet, you only get given one table for differentiation and integration. So differentiation works by going that way in the table, and integration goes by looking up on this side and going that way on the table. So what that means is because um, cosine differentiates to negative sine, when you're looking up to integrate sine, you look it up and you have to realize that if you're integrating sine, it's going to go to negative cosine. Even though the table says cosine here, negative sine here, you're using the table this way. So therefore, you've got to look up for sine on this side. There's only negative sine. So therefore, if you're integrating sine and it gives negative sine gives you cos, then sine is going to give you negative cos. All right. So the tricky thing here is you'll remember when we were integrating, we got things like when we were integrating tan, we got sec cos, whatever it is. Two things anyway. Oh, sec squared. OK, go to the other one then cosec or whatever. We got two things. So because you have those two things, it is likely that if they are integrating, they're not going to make it complicated and say integrate cosec. They're going to integrate cosec cot or whatever, and you're going to use those two to go backwards. All right. So they're pretty nice at using the right hand side of the table and going back to the left hand not making you have to try and work things out. The only one they won't do is the negative part. So you need to realize that you've got to shift it over to the other side. All right, so first thing, use the table backwards. Second thing, again we have to compensate. So you need to make sure this is the worst done, often the worst done easy question in this paper because people forget to compensate because it's trig and they think by going backwards in the table that's enough trickiness. All right, so the last thing that you should do is check by differentiating. See if you get the answer back again. I mean, the question back again. So if we've got sine 3x, right, and we differentiate that, we differentiate it and get what? Cos 3x, that comes from the table, and 3 from that 3x. All right? So times by what it is in front of so when we go backwards here, we need to compensate by dividing by 3 or multiplying by a third is what we prefer to do. Right? So if we had here 3 cos x, when we go back over here, we get 3 cos x sine x. We get 3 sine x. All right, so it's this number in here that causes the compensation, not this number here. Okay, so if we had cos 3x here, over here we'd have a third cos 3x. We'd be compensating for that number. All right, so cos... So do you compensate... By times in one over the differential? Yes. Okay. So cos goes to sine 3x, and then we get that one third. And plus c. All right, and then you can check that by differentiating, and yes, it'll come out. So let's have a look at some. EGs. Integrate sine x over 2 dx. All right, what does x over 2 mean? Another way of saying it? 
Yes, another way of saying it. Yes, another way of saying it. A half X. All right, so if we can remember that a half X, that gives us a clue. Okay, so we want to, differ, we want to integrate it. So sine, we look up in our table, it is a negative sine over here, it goes to a cosine, so we're going to have negative cosine. Leave your space for your compensation. Negative cosine. All right. And then what we want to do is we want to say, okay, so what gave us nothing? All right. A half times what gave us nothing. So basically we're saying a half times what, our compensation, equals one. Because it's multiplied by one. So that's going to be two. So two is our compensation in this case because it's a half. So we wouldn't go one over one over two, which is two plus C. All right? Okay, then we get some really exciting ones. This one. Now this is when they often just put one of these in. Technically, they shouldn't be allowed to because you don't have to have learnt trig rules, all right? So technically, they're not allowed to, but usually there's one in there because you've got all the formulas. What you need to realise is that this is, you, you're not allowed to integrate products. So we need to change this to get rid of that squared, all right? So to get rid of... We look up in our formula sheet and see how we can get rid of sine squared. Where was sine squared written that there was something that didn't have a square? So it comes from a formula that says this in your formula sheet. All right, that's what it says in the formula sheet. The only thing in this line is sine squared. We, that's what we've got. We need the rest of this. All right, so we're going to change this to say sine squared A equals. So if we swap it, it's going to be 1 minus cos 2A divided by 2. That's the rewrite of that formula to say sine squared A. So this is what we're integrating. So from here, we're going to go to integrate a half minus a half cos 2x dx. Well, that's in the formula sheet. It's written as a, but we were asked in terms of x. I've just replaced it with an x. So this one's easy. Integrating a number, what do we do? Add x. So we can write x over 2, or we can write a half x. Both would be marked as right. This one, not so easy. We're looking on this side. Cosine goes to sine. All right. So we know what we're going to get here is a sine 2x. Our compensation for that 2 is a half. We've already got a half. That makes a quarter. And it's positive. So... That's a trickier one, all right? One more trickier one, again comes from the formula sheet. And once again, that same thing I said before is true. You can't integrate products. You need sums. You need something separated by pluses and minuses. Mm -hmm. It would be fine here if it was one of the things on the right-hand side. So the two products that are on the right-hand side are, well, there's three, sec squared x. There's cot x, cosec x. Two, are you looking at it? Is it there? You're looking on the differentiation table. Yep, on the right-hand side, it goes. Cos x, negative sine x, sec squared x. So any of those ones that are down that side, if they're products, you don't have to deal with it. But if it's not a product there, and it's normally this one, which is a sine cos, 
then we again have to go to our formula sheet and look up how we can change this into a sum. So you'll find something there that says products to sums or sum formula or something like that. And you have to use those. All right. So it says that sine 5x cos 3x is equal to a half. So the formula says um, sine a cos b equals a half sine. No, it actually doesn't. It says 2, doesn't it? Um, sine a plus b. Then what? Mm, plus sine a minus b. Plus sine a minus b. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. We want this, but we want to have it written as a sum. So 2 goes to a half. All right? Because we don't have 2 over here, we're going to have half this answer. So half this answer is sine of these two added together, sine 8x plus a half minus sine 2x. All right, so that's the rewrite. So that's what we're integrating. We're integrating a half sine 8x plus a half sine 2x dx. So that was a question, but this is actually what we're going to do. So we look up in our table, sine back to cos goes negative. So we get negative cos 8x, compensate with the 8, means an 8, a half and an 8 makes a what? 16th, good, well done. <laughs> Same thing here, so tell me what we're getting here. A quarter, negative a quarter. So you can change that to a minus, but it's just as good to write it like cos cos 2x plus c. So those are the really difficult ones, which they possibly could put one of in your question. No, because cos goes to sine. Cos and sine. Cos to sine is positive. The one that's different is sine to cos. Right. All right, so it's careful, be careful to read that in the answers.